I hope you both are doing well. I'm actually going to start with you, Cristiano. I mean, as an actress, there must be such a great element of joy when a role like this comes your way. I mean, there's so much for you to work with here. Yes, very much so. Um, I was thrilled because it's not just, you know, a great opportunity. I mean, I, you know, to be the lead of, of such, uh, the lead actress of such a great project is a great opportunity. I mean, as an acting job, <laughs> uh, but it was also, it's also a great story. So, uh, to be also part of a of a great storytelling, uh, you know, it's it it really gives meaning to what we do as as artists. You don't just want to do it for the fun of it. You also want to, you know, have you know, it, you want meaning to it. You want to have you want it to have some meaning. I mean, this is for both of you. When you both sort of in across your careers, when you played characters who do such good to the world, or even in a more kind of subtle, understated way, people that are just kind of inherently good and have good traits, do they ever rub off on you as actors across your careers? Do you ever find you try and kind of adopt certain aspects of characters you've played? I I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I I do actually. I wish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been playing so many heavy bad guys. I don't really want to adapt their qualities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the nice things about doing this role is it's, you know, Father uh, Archbishop Corrigan, he starts off, you know, pretty heavy uh, with her. And what, what I what I loved about it is by the end of it, he, she has really uh, brought about a change in him, you know, um, having to deal with her. And I, it's a journey that I like. And that part of it, I wouldn't mind adopting. I, I love kind of period films, especially those kind of set in New York in this kind of era. Uh, what's it like kind of stepping on to set in a movie like this and seeing all the kind of vehicles and the clothes and everything kind of come to life? It must be so transformative for you both. Well, I, I love it, actually. Yeah. You know, everything that is in costume, it really, you know, it's like a a, a carnival, you know, you, like you, you get to dress up and, 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 and be something so far away from you. So it's it's very exciting. And with this particular movie, actually, I saw it coming to life because I was there way before the set was designed. They were still working on the costumes. I was, you know, I was in Buffalo when they were still building uh, everything. So when I, I then saw it completed, it was it was literally jumping into a completely different world. And, you know, it's, I find it very comforting. I'm very comfortable on set. I'm not so comfortable in real life. <laughs> yeah, no, I know the feeling. Um, yeah, I got there, the five points, all the stuff in the five points, <clears throat> that neighborhood, uh, I got there after that was all shot and they were already turning down the set. So I never got to see that. Um, but there is something really about putting on the 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 clothes, the attire of the archbishop or a character, sometimes it feels like it does half the acting for you, just just stepping into that. Um, so it's it's fun. That's what, you know, it's one of the the, the things we do that that it just goes back to being a kid and pretending and, you know, get that jump into that world. And of course, both obviously being a kind of historical story, what do you think it is that gives Cabrini a kind of a, a relevance and a kind of modern climate and a kind of an, an accessibility that we'll sort of see it travel the world as well? Yeah, well, I, th I think that's one of the great things about this movie. Eustace Wolfington, who is really the force behind this, uh, the man who has really made this happen, um, he, he did not want to make this a Catholic movie, even though it takes place in that world. He really wanted to make it a story, much like Cabrini. Uh, she wanted to reach out to the world, and 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 Eustace really wants this movie to reach out to the world. Uh, and I think the way we told it, uh, it, it really has a possibility of doing that. Yeah, it really speaks to everybody. Everybody has something to relate to, um, be it you know um, a woman who recognizes herself and you know any of the characters or uh you know i'm an immigrant myself and and i've i've always felt like an immigrant mm. i studied in england i lived in england for, for very long i feel half british and still i'm italian and now i'm here in the states so there is always there, there is this movie has the potential to speak to literally everybody and it's very contemporary so yeah. Yeah, and David, I mean, it's not just the Archbishop, Archbishop, but I mean, you've got some such a great varied career. I mean, looking back across your kind of your list of projects, you know, from Green Mile to The Rock to kind of Hurt Locker, I was wondering if there's one role or or one project that you hold kind of closest to your heart, one that you're most proud of. Well, the, the ones that I'm, I, I tend to be most proud of are the ones that are least seen. Um, you know, The Green Mile, obviously, it's a, it's a movie that just, it plays, literally plays all over the world. 
there's almost nowhere that I go that someone hasn't just seen it, you know, to this day. And and that's it's wonderful. It's a, it's an amazing movie. But there are some of the independent movies that really uh, I have loved. Uh, I did a couple with Sean Penn. You know, I did the first movie he ever directed, The Indian Runner, and then I did The Crossing Guard. And uh, the two of those were important to me at that time in my life, but still important to me. They were, they were, um, they had a lot of, uh, uh, they changed the direction of my life. And I thought they were terrific movies. Honestly, my editor's going to be very pleased. I managed to squeeze one mention of The Rock in there today. <laughs> he loves that film so much. But thank oh, you so much. Yeah, it's fun. It's no yeah. doubt. It's just fun. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, guys. Best of luck with the release of the movie. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!